Hi everyone, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars and this is a basic uh, video on tips and techniques for getting the most out of your uh, X-T6 SkyQuest Classic Dobsonian. It's already set up, I'm going to assume you read the manual and got it to this point in the uh, setup, which is basically fully assembled, ready to go uh, to view the night sky. The first thing you got to do before uh, using this to locate objects in the night sky is to align the finder scope. When you first put it on the telescope, it will not be aligned. The telescope will be pointing here, and the finder might be pointing here. They're not calibrated. So you've got to first do it the hard way. Find something with the main scope without using the finder. Uh, the field of view is much narrower than it is naked eye, so if you were trying to use the scope without the finder being aligned, it would just be an exercise in frustration. So I like to do it during the day with a distant object. It's just easier, everything's brighter, you can see what you're doing. Uh, Dobbs can get a little low, so if you've got a fence, that might be a little difficult. So if, if that's the case, then use the moon, use uh, Polaris that doesn't move. Uh, you just have to be a little quicker about it if you're using the moon because since things are floating through the sky, you've got to align it relatively quickly so you get them calibrated. Uh, but let's assume you can find something during the day, a, a tree, a power pole. Find it through the eyepiece, just move it up and down, left and right. There's no, there's no locks on the daub. It just stays put when you let go, so it's very easy to use. Uh, point it, get it centered in the eyepiece, and then use the adjustment screws on the side and the back of the uh, uh, finder scope to align the dot to the same object you're looking at. So let's say I'm aimed at the corner of a building way off in the distance, at least a half mile or more away. Uh, then look through the finder, adjust it so the dot is on that same corner. Now you're ready to go. The finder is aligned and ready to find things in the night sky. The scope comes with a 25 millimeter plossal eyepiece and that gives you the magnification. Uh, to figure out the power, it's the focal length of the telescope, which in this case is 1,200 millimeters, divided by the eyepiece, 25 millimeters. I think that's about 40 something power. So uh, you can use that to locate objects, and then if you add on a higher power eyepiece, you can zoom in. Um, when you're ready to go and view, daubs, I think, are the easiest to be used when you're sitting down. So get yourself a little drummer's stool or a chair, something, something fairly low, and then you're right at the perfect height to view and to align with uh, through the finder scope. So let's say Jupiter is over here and you want to center it. So roughly align it just by hand, uh, eyeball along the tube, and then sit down in your chair, look through the finder, and put the dot right on Jupiter. And when you look through the eyepiece, you'll find it's, it's probably not perfectly centered, but it's somewhere right in the field of view. So just tweak the positioning up and down, left and right, uh, until it's centered. Focus using the knob here, and now you have yourself a nice view of uh, the moons around Jupiter. If you want a closer up view, I would recommend adding on another eyepiece. Remember, the eyepieces give you the magnification, so if you were to add a, a 10 millimeter eyepiece, that would be 1200 divided by 10, 120 power. Uh, we have a Barlow lens, which is a doubler. It will fit in between the eyepiece and the telescope and double the power, so that's a great way to increase the magnification of your collection of eyepieces without having to buy a whole bunch of eyepieces in the, in the series. Uh, if you're looking at the moon, we have a moon filter, say, for uh, example, uh, if you're going outside on a bright sunny day without sunglasses, it's not very comfortable. Same thing when you're looking at the moon. Six inches sucks in a lot of light, and uh, it can uh, lower the contrast, it can wash out your eyes, you just don't see as much, unless you have a little moon filter uh, to put on the eyepiece. So a very handy way to do it. Low power, like the 25 millimeter, is great for, like I said, finding objects. Uh, you can center the planets, you can locate the Andromeda galaxy. Um, if you're looking at the moon and planets, you probably want to step up in power and get even closer. But if you're looking at, uh, like I mentioned, the Andromeda galaxy, low power is best uh, because that object is very large. It fills up a, a big part of the sky. Uh, in fact, if you were to overlay the moon in front of it, you probably have to stack five or six moons across the front of it in order to equal the size of the Andromeda galaxy. So it's, it's very big in the sky. You don't need a lot of power, you just need low power and a wide field of view. So the 25 millimeter is perfect for that, for the Orion Nebula, any number of different deep sky objects. So just keep that in mind. Low power for most big deep sky objects, and then add on a Barlow or a 10 millimeter eyepiece for a very high magnification. All right, so there you have it, the SkyQuest XT6 Classic, a very good telescope for, uh, for the money, a lot of aperture, for a good price, uh, a manual system, you just move it up and down, left and right, very simple. Uh, you'll also, you'll find that it's very easy to follow things just by nudging it along. Um, it'll be easy even at high power to, to track along with a planet. Uh, 
I suggest reading through the manual. Um, I know I kind of showed you how the thing works, but you want to familiarize yourself with all the parts and the pieces and how they all go together. And then with a little bit of experience under the night sky, uh, pointing at it at uh, first the moon, then the planets, and then starting to find a little bit harder to find objects like uh, Andromeda or the Orion Nebula, you'll quickly get a feel for how it works and what magnifications work best for what objects. All right, well, there you have it. Thank you very much, and clear skies.